What's going on guys? Jim the Game Guru. Okay, today's video, let's get into Gods Love Dinosaurs. Interesting game. Uh, a game about building up your own ecosystem and in within your ecosystem you have food chains. You have prey, predators, and dinosaurs. And why do you have dinosaurs? Because the gods love them. The gods love dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are the highest in the food chain. The person with the most dinosaur eggs and dinosaurs in their ecosystem at the end of the game ends up winning the game. Now this is one game that I was actually kind of surprised in its simplicity. It looks way more complicated when you're looking at it from the outside, looking at the game, looks way more complicated when you look at the manual and you start seeing, okay, activation of prey and predator and activation of death. When I first saw that, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna get nuts. But the game is actually really, really simplistic. It's a tile-based game where you're putting down these tiles and it has cute little animal meeples for each of the little prey, the dinosaurs, and the predators. So let's get into it. Let's dig into this game. Let me show you components. Do a quick how to play on it. If you are new here, please consider subscribing or following. All right, so before I get into all of the components on the table for Gods Love Dinosaurs, let's take a look at this manual really quick. As you can see, it's actually a large size manual. Not too many pages though. I believe it only has, what, 11 pages. Very, very small and for a such a large size manual. Very well printed. This manual has excellent printing with colors and explanations. Very easy to understand. Super easy to follow. Here we go, predator activation when we're on the tiles. And then it goes into dinosaur activations and it goes into the eventual end game scoring. It tells you all about the markers and the tiles and when the actual end game is triggered in this game. All right, as far as the components, every single player ends up getting a, a starter tile for their ecosystem. And every single starter tile, you will get actually a dinosaur that goes on there. And this player over here, player two, needs another dinosaur. I don't know where that one went to. Okay, so every player gets a dinosaur in the middle, a rat, a rabbit, a frog in their starting ecosystem. There's also a nest, a nest right here that has eggs. These are dinosaur eggs. These are what we're gonna use in the game to, in order to hatch new dinosaurs in your ecosystem. So let's take a look at the, the animals here. We have a very, 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 very cute animal meeples. Let me go ahead and dig all these up. So here we go. The five different animal meeples are bunny, rabbit, hawk, tiger, frog, and a rat. Very, very cute. Okay, so let's put those back. And then, of course, you also have the dinosaurs. And here's what the dinosaurs look like. They are on the top of the food chain. And they just look so super, super cool. I really dig the way these little animal meeples look. Over here with the center board where it's kind of like the marketplace where people grab tiles during their turn, but they don't actually purchase the tiles. All they have to do is grab them. There is no actual cost to any of the tiles. Left side over here, we have an egg pile. It's an egg supply for the dinosaur eggs. Now, if you notice, there's a couple of them that have different colors. The lighter color is worth one and the darker color is worth five. This is worth five eggs. That way, later on, in the game you can trade in five eggs just for one of those darker ones up here we have a supply for four tile piles and then those tile piles are actually going to populate this market area where people can grab well i shouldn't call this market more of a tile supply area where people can grab the tiles for their ecosystem. Let me go ahead and show you some of the tiles and some of the piles. We'll use this one for an example. Most of the tiles will have a special little marker. And what that does is whenever you bring a tile with that marker into your ecosystem, you will spawn the animal of that type. So if I put this one in my ecosystem, a tiger will end up spawning in this spot. There are several different terrains in this game. We have like a lake here, a forest. We have 
planes. Here we have another plane one with a tiger. Let's see what else we have. Uh, more plane and water. And then we have mountain here. So this one is a mountain. Mountain types are very important in this game because they are the hex tile that a dinosaur can land at the end of their hunt. All dinosaurs in your ecosystem, when they go on a hunt, have to land on a mountain. Let's see what else we have. Uh, more of these forests and plains. Uh, forest there, more mountain and plain. And see water and forest and water. Now there is another tile type and it's right here and I'll show it to you really quickly. This one right here is a wild terrain type. This one serves as all the terrain types, except for mountain, I believe. Um, but this one, so whenever you have prey in your ecosystem and they end up activating, this could also serve as a water or a forest or a plain. Right down here underneath each column, what happens is we have a dinosaur tracker. So we have a little, a, one of the dinosaur meeples are on here and this tracker will move to the right every time the dinosaur is activated. And how do we activate animals in this game? Well, what happens is any time a column is empty, somebody grabs a tile and it empties the column on that turn, then that will activate that particular an animal. Every animal is in its own column. Frog, rabbit, rat, tiger, and the eagle. These two are the only predators Besides the dinosaurs, these three over here are the prey. Now the thing with the hawk is that they can, they whenever they hunt in your ecosystem, they have to hunt in a straight line. They, they can move up to three spaces in your ecosystem in a straight line. Remember that, up to three. The tiger can move up to two two spaces, but they don't have to actually move in a straight line. They can move up one and then they can move over or which, you know, as long as it's two moves. The dinosaurs, now the dinosaurs can move up to five spaces. They can move up to five spaces in your ecosystem whenever they're activated. The dinosaurs can eat any of these animals, predators, can only eat the prey, so you can't have a hawk eating the tiger, and the tiger can't eat the, the hawk. They have to eat one of the preys. Anytime a dinosaur eats a predator, you'll actually lay another egg in the nest. So that's how you accumulate more eggs. So that way this game forces you into this hierarchy where you have to constantly populate your ecosystem with prey and then gradually get into these predators and then gradually feed your dinosaurs with the predators. But you can feed a dinosaur with a prey if you want to keep it alive. Now, the one thing that's very important before we dig into the gameplay of this game, predators and the dinosaurs, they can starve. So whenever they go on a hunt inside of your ecosystem, they can actually starve and die if they do not eat at least one animal. Anytime a dinosaur eats a predator, you'll lay the egg, like I said earlier. Anytime a predator goes through multiple preys, then what happens is they will actually end up spawning on your board an additional predator for each one you go through. Another thing that's very important is that every single predator has to finish their hunt on a prey. All right, let's get into it. But before I get into this, I just wanna show you guys a, a close up of the starter, of the starter piece here. So here you go. This is how our starter hex looks like. Uh, we have the rat, the frog, the bunny rabbit and the dinosaur with a mountain terrain in the middle. Anytime you spawn a new animal, you cannot spawn it in a place where an existing animal already exists. Every space on the board can only have one animal or dinosaur occupying that. We also have a volcano Kano, little kind of token here. Uh, this basically signifies whose turn it is. This game is one of those games that everything happens simultaneously. Now, as far as picking the terrain and laying it down your ecosystem, it goes turn by turn. But when it comes to the actual activation of the animals, that happens simultaneously for everyone. 
All right, let's go over here. First player over here. Let's go ahead. They're going to go ahead and grab a tile. So let's kick off this gameplay here. Um, what they're probably going to do is they're going to probably grab this one right here with the rat and the mountain. Okay, just like that. So the rat and the mountain, they're going to stick that right here. And as soon as they add that to their ecosystem, they will get the rat for that little icon there on the board. They also have another mountain here, which is very helpful because then if you get another dinosaur on their ecosystem, because each dinosaur has to end their turn on a mountain when they hunt, it allows you to free up this center spot whenever you hatch a new dinosaur. So that's another thing that's very important to know is that whenever you hatch a dinosaur from an egg, it will end up hatching in the center where the nest is. Okay, so this player over here is going to go. I'm going to just move the volcano back and forth. That way it'll help me keep track of whose, whose turn it is. They're going to go over here and they're going to grab this and they're going to stick another plane right over here. Now, whenever you're putting down your tiles, you can actually move them around however you wish, as long as they kind of intersect nicely onto your ecosystem. So we'll get another bunny rabbit because another bunny rabbit goes there. Now the fact to over here, this player... So this player is gonna go, what are they going to choose? Maybe they'll do this one right over here with the frog, another water. So I'm, you notice I'm keeping the water together, additional terrain together. And there's a reason why I'm keeping similar terrains together because whenever prey activate, they will spawn in your ecosystem. But when they do that, they can only spawn in the terrain that each prey is suited for. So let's go back over here. None of the columns are empty, so nothing has activated yet. So this person's gonna go, now the wild terrain is really, really good. The only problem with the wild terrain though is that that piece does not give me extra prey. So this person's gonna go ahead and grab this one. They're gonna grab this one with the plane and the water. So they'll stick it right here. So they'll align it here with the pl plane and water just like that. And they will get another bunny rabbit. Now, if you notice, this column here is empty. That means the rabbits activate. And this is the part that happens simultaneously for everyone. So this player over here has a rabbit. They only have one more spot that has a plane. So this one rabbit will multiply into another rabbit, just like that. This person over here has three rabbits. Each one of these rabbits can multiply. They can kind of expand, but I can only put two down and the reason is because i only had two open planes i couldn't I, I didn't have anywhere else that i could put the rabbits all right dinosaurs do not activate yet because the column with the dinosaur token has to activate in order for the dinosaur to activate okay so we're gonna go back over here and let's go ahead and pick another terrain Oh, I think we're gonna do this. So this person's gonna do this. This is gonna give them a tiger. There you go, a tiger. So if the tiger column activates, a tiger will have to go on the hunt. Okay, let's go over here to this person. Maybe they'll do this. Maybe they'll go ahead and do this if they can. And they'll go ahead and put a hawk right here. So we have a hawk. Remember hawks can only hunt in a straight line up to three spaces. So let's go ahead and activate the rats because the rat column has been emptied. So this person over here has an extra rat that goes over here. This person over here will get another rat, but they have two rats, but they can only put one because they only have one free forest tile available. All right, so let's go ahead and pass the baton over here. We could activate the hawk by doing that, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it easier for this person because this person has a hawk. Let's go ahead and put this down. I'm going to put this here like this, and we're going to get another tiger in our ecosystem, just like that. I love how this branches out and how cute the animals look like on these individual ecosystem. It looks really, really awesome on the table. So this person's gonna go now. Uh, what are they gonna do? Maybe what they'll do is they'll go ahead and stick this here. This will give them a tiger as well. And now the hawk activates. Well, this person's the only one that has a hawk. They're gonna go on a hunt. They can go up to three spaces. One, two, three, and they have to end on a prey. Well, look at that. They ended on a prey. The rabbit is gone because they ate the rabbit. They ate the frog, but because they went through the frog, 
they get another hawk. So they get to place another hawk because they went through a prey. It's basically a reward for being able to eat multiple prey on one turn. So this person over here is gonna go, let's flip this back over here, since this volcano like thing back here, this person's gonna go over here now. And now, if you notice, I'm pulling from the frog one. The frog one is going to activate dinosaurs because this animal activates and it's where the dinosaur tracker is. But let's go ahead and put a frog meeple here. Now all dinosaurs end up activating for all of the players. That means the dinosaurs can take five, up to five moves and they have to land back on a Mountain is very, very important. So this person over here, I think we could do it. One, two, three, four. So let's do that. Let's go over here. One, uh, two. So they just ate two predators there. Three, they the third one there. And then they land on a mountain. So that ends that hunt. Now, but they ate three predators. That means they get three eggs, just like that. Now the first thing you do whenever you activate dinosaurs is you see if you can hatch a new dinosaur. And if you can, you will get rid of one of your eggs, return one of your eggs back to the supply, and you will hatch a new dinosaur there. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that because the dinosaur that was existing in the ecosystem was already on the nest. Remember, a dinosaur or any animal can can there can only be one dinosaur or any animal on a given hex at any time. Now let's do this person's hunt too. So we'll go ahead and do we'll see one, two, three, four, five. Let's do that. One, two, eat the tiger. Three, four, five. They ate the rat. The dinosaur doesn't get any reward for eating the rat. You only get rewards for eating a predator. So that gives this person an additional egg right there. So they have four eggs. This person here has six eggs and the dinosaur ended up on a mountain. Now the dinosaur tracker moves over one. So now basically the next time the dinosaur activates is whenever the rabbit's column is empty. But whenever a dinosaur is activated, you have to refill the animal columns with new tiles that are empty. Only the ones that are empty, just like this. So I'm going to flip these ones over. Whenever the first pile of tiles is gone, you go to the next pile and you continue filling it up. So we're going to keep filling it up just like that. I believe this was the only one that was not empty, if I'm not mistaken. This is the only one that has one less tile available to pick because it was not empty. The only time you can ever refill tiles on the, the center board is only when the dinosaurs are activated. That's the only time you can do it. Now, whenever you get to the point that you can no longer refill the empty columns in any, any of the empty columns with new tiles, the game immediately ends. And what you do then is you count the number of points from the eggs you have available in your nest and the dinosaurs that you have in your ecosystem. Every dinosaur in your ecosystem is worth one point. Every singular egg is worth one point, And every single one of these dark eggs is worth five. The person with the most points with eggs and dinosaurs is the victor. And that's how you play the game. Very simple game, very cute. I love the animal meeples. I love the dinosaur meeples. I love the, the hex. It is, I wish, the only drawback to this game right now is I wish they had a little bit more, maybe, maybe an additional terrain, maybe a little bit more animals, like as far as more prey and more predators. But I think this game is in a situation where it is really good for an expansion. I can see additional expansions coming out for this game, like additional sideboards. And that's probably how they're gonna do it. They're probably gonna have like another sideboard that you could add to the base, to the middle board that will have maybe two or three more animals eventually that you can add to the game. But it's, it's cute. I, I believe anybody can play this. Like great for casual, great for expert game uh, board game players. Even grandma who never plays board games or only plays simple card games 
games can play this game. That's how easy this game is to play. So that's it. This is God's Love Dinosaurs. And it's from Panasaurus Games. And Panasaurus Games, I feel like they are, a lot of their games are very, very simplistic. I have a few of their games in my collection. I don't think I've ever come across one so far that I've seen has been very, very complicated by any means whatsoever. If you guys like this video, please like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and I will have a giveaway again for board game in October. I will see you guys later, bye.